Welcome back to my awesome series of lectures on um, early American Republic. We're going to talk about the causes of uh, the War of 1812 and how the, 18, the War of 1812 um, progressed and what the effects were. So let's get started. All right, impressment we know is, we learned from our last lecture that impressment is the practice of forcing people to serve in a Navy or an Army. And the British were doing this um, to American ships, and they were doing this for two reasons. One, they wanted to take American merchant ships um, that were going to France and interrupt them so they wouldn't trade with France. And the other reason was they were fighting with France and they needed a lot of people in their Navy. So um, France uh, was doing this, but not as much as the British. Uh, the United States was supposed to be neutral in all this. They didn't care. All right, the Embargo Act. So Jefferson does not want to go to war over this. He does not want to fight. So he says, we're just going to stop all trade with foreign countries. Um, smuggling starts up. Surprise, surprise. America has a long history of smuggling. And the U.S. economy is hurt, and they go into a depression. That leads to the Non-Intercourse Act of 1809. And this is, uh, Madison puts this one in. And puts this act in and it says that U.S. can trade with any foreign country except for Britain and France. So uh, by 1811, 1812, British ships are blockading the U.S. ports to stop trade with France. So uh, we didn't want to get in a, a fight about this, but uh, the problem is not going away. All right, <clears throat> let's change our focus now to the Western Wars. Britain was supplying Native American tribes with guns and encouraged attacks on the United States. Um, so they were, there was a Confederacy um, in the Northwest Territories and the Native Americans were starting to get organized and stick together, um, realizing they had a bond where um, to stop the Americans from coming over the mountains and taking all their stuff. So the British were quite happy to f give these uh, Native American tribes who are willing to fight, willing to give them support and guns and stuff like that. So Britain was still not over us leaving in the uh, Revolutionary War, um, and they wanted to interrupt us as much as we could, so they started to give Native American tribes help, which makes sense because we have most of the British army is in Europe fighting Napoleon who is like one of the greatest generals of all time. So they need as many men as they can get in Europe. So to have the Native Americans fighting for them in America is really, really smart. Okay, so we have the Battle of Tippecanoe. Um, in 1811, William Henry Harrison and his troops attacked Tecumseh's town along the Tippecanoe Creek, and he is the head of the Confederacy. So... Uh, this is a great military victory, and it kind of settles things down out west. All right, so we have a group called the Warhawks. The Warhawks are people that wanted war with Great Britain. Typically, when you're talking about war, they talk about hawks and doves. The uh, hawks are the ones that want to fight, and the doves are the ones that want peace. Um, these were pro-war Republicans. Uh, they were really into this, and they're, they're pushing for war. Um, most, the most outspoken was Henry Clay of Kentucky. This is not the last time we're going to hear about Henry Clay. Um, the Warhawks wanted to take over Canada and Florida, and they wanted revenge. So they're looking for more territory to make the United States greater than it is, and revenge against the British. I know that some of you are just going through this, and maybe some people aren't listening to this and they're just taking notes. What I would like you to do right now is I would like you to put your left hand in the air and shake it back and forth like you're waving. Don't look at me or anything. Don't look at anybody else. Just shake your left hand. Okay, put your hand down. That way I can tell who is listening to my awesome, awesome lectures. All right, so Congress declares war. Um, they officially declare war in June of 1812. 
uh, the vote in the Senate is close and House of Representatives, it's not. What really happened during the war? Okay, so Britain is unprepared for the declaration of war by the U.S. They have their hands full in Europe and with France. And to have the United States come along and say, oh, we're going to fight a war against you. It's like, you know, what are you people doing? Um, so they couldn't really commit themselves totally to this war and was not popular with the British citizens. They didn't want to mess with America anymore. But the British Navy blockaded American ports to stop trading with all countries. And uh, they were able to bottle up the East Coast pretty good. But they'd already been doing this um, earlier um, in 1808, 1809, um, when they were trying to stop trade with France, American trade with France. All right, here's some major battles. <clears throat> um, pause if you want to see them or come back to this. Okay, so we decide, the Americans decide, the great idea is to invade Canada because that's where the British have all their troops and we can free the Canadians from their British oppressors and they're going to join us and they'll be part of the United States. Um, this goes really, really badly. Uh, they make a couple of attempts to invade Canada, the Americans do, and it doesn't work. And we are going to see that the British, um, later on in the war, start to push down and they take over pretty much all of Wisconsin and Michigan, modern day Wisconsin and Michigan. And they even got the city of Detroit. So um, this didn't work out the way that they thought it would. It, it did, it's not surprising because the Americans did not have a standing army, did not have a large standing army. It was a bunch of militias were fighting. And the British had a bunch of, had like the best soldiers in the world who had just beaten France with Napoleon, the biggest military genius in the world. All right. So Canada's a disaster. But um, we do, uh, the Americans do have um, some victories on the Great Lakes. Uh, they pull off some stuff. And this famous quote is, we have met the enemy and they are ours, which meaning basically we've met the enemy and we own them. So U.S. gains control of the Great Lakes, which uh, helps out a lot. Okay, the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. Andrew Jackson. We're going to talk a lot about Andrew Jackson coming up. Um, Andrew Jackson made uh, he was very famous and he made a lot of his a lot of his fame came from fighting native americans so in 1814 andrew jackson uh had a treaty with cherokee got their help and they won a crushing victory against the creeks uh the creek tribe was allied with the british so that's why they attacked them um once again the creeks were forced to give up land to Americans. So Jackson loved this because he loved kicking uh, Native Americans off their land. This was the first time he got to do it. All right, 1814, the <laughs> Battle of Washington, D.C. wasn't really much of a battle. Um, the uh, Napoleonic War against France ended and Britain started to send like real troops over to America. And so in 1814, this was a batch of real troops who had fought um, in Europe. Uh, and they sailed up to Chesapeake Bay and landed an invasion force 30 miles from Washington, D.C. It gets so bad that the main fort that's protecting it on the Potomac River um, is Fort Washington, and uh, the American troops burn it just so um, the British don't get it. The British burned the White House and the Capitol and a lot of other buildings. And... Uh, President Madison's wife was there, and she fled to Virginia, Dolly Madison. All right, I'm going to stop here. Go to part two of the War of 1812 lecture.